bubbles, it's more kind of through through the core of your body. So that this is sort of elbows power, which is not very strong. I put your arms out once to your side. If I push down on the, on the edges of his elbow, I can kind of collapse that. Okay, but if he pushes, if he pushes through his body from the underside, that's impossible to collapse. You feel what I'm saying? And you can feel it. Just imagine, like my arm, my elbows are out. This is really kind of weak. So if my movement comes up with the strength on the top. It's actually pretty weak. It has to come through my core and push up through my core. So it's actually, this resonance is coming through my shape. So when he comes in, it's like, oh, that's the feeling. Okay? Then as I'm stepping, this can be considered a knee strike. And then this, but that, the way I was taught in the kata, these were bottom fists, but my, the way I was taught, these are two inward punches. Like that. Then I'm stepping in, punching in. So it's like one, two, three. That would be the application. So he's reaching up, then here. Okay? But go through your body. Connect. And drive through your center. You can try it a little bit with your partner, the application of the movement. Is, um, after, after, say, I make this, this movement here where I'm breaking, striking, this hand coming across, if there's anything in its way, this hand can, like, clear that pathway. Like, I can put it on straight, straight. But I, my punch isn't coming in on its own. It actually has, like, a, like the bow of a boat. Like, anything that's an obstruction is kind of uh, diverted. And I have this sort of, again, almost like a physical extension of my feeling pressing into him, and then my punch follows into that. Do you follow? Oh, Zeus. So it's like my mind goes through him, my hand goes through him, and the vacuum of all that, my technique falls. Okay, so there's a little bit of a benefit of having that hand in front of you like that. Okay, so try one more time. Easy. Yeah. Take your turn. There are two things that I would be especially um, aware of. Okay. One is that when you're making the turn, when you're making this turn, you're blocking and you're not blindly stepping into a possible attack. So this hand having to reach to the opposite side of my body and sort of pass me as I'm making the turn, that's safeguarding my entry. And the second thing is, then this hip, this hip has to reach in. It has to commit. This whole side of my body is committed in that movement. And then I'm stepping back. Now, the application, the reason why the commitment is important is, say he's coming with a Jodan Suki. I want to dig in here really deep, because it's only in the deepness that this sort of a technique works. If you see what I'm saying? It has a lot to do with a really deep proximity of my hip to his hip. Like, if I'm out here, that doesn't work. If I'm in here, with this hip now cutting in nice and deep, like I'm making a really committed advance here, then this is actually very easy to make a So this sort of commitment here, very important for the next technique. When you step back in the kata, of course, the kata is stylized, but you're stepping back and up. So, nothing. So pretty, pretty dynamic in the entry, like that, so coming strong. And then slow but connect. And then retreat. Okay, give it a try one more time. So the momentum you're generating with your body should be the same momentum that goes into all of the movement. And if they're happening simultaneously, so say I'm, I'm making this turn, and this turn is pretty succinct, then this hand coming across, this, this hand coming across, this rotational energy is the same intensity as this blocking, blocking energy. So you don't want to have a, you don't want to rotate really strong and then have a weak block. And they don't want to be disconnected timing wise. They're like, they're together. See that? And, uh, and I would also say don't make, as best you can, don't make two movements out of this. Don't go one, two. Make it kind of like, like a loop. Like a loop. That feeling. So, super slow motion. Wait, one more. Ooh. I'm going to step in the hand so that they're working together. Like, as my knee's coming across, my arm is associated with it. 
So you're kind of getting unified body motion. Everyone's got that. That looks awesome. But now the next thing is, just like you put the heaviness on your punch when you made that Kage Zuki after the Sekomenuke, then the Yokata like Jion, like this movement, like Jite, you want to put that on like the whole half of your body. And this would be a typical movement where you want to kind of do that. Like, the whole right side of my body falling into the technique has the same heaviness that your hand had a second ago when you're practicing the cognitive. So it's like, I'm coming around, like that feeling of, like, wants to be at the end of it. The movement is super slow. They're very definitive. So you do that, when you do that movement, when you're making that, that turn, and you're coming down kind of with the, the side of your body, you, when you get to get this heaviness, doesn't doesn't require you to kind of bend your back. And I would liken it to if you think about like a, when you hang your hat or you hang a shirt on like a, a, a pole that has the little things that come out. That is your spine. Okay. Then the shirt that you hang on it, that's like your body relaxing on that axis. So even though my my back is straight, like under my arm is kind of like the shirt hanging on the on the, on the hanger. Under my leg, is the, so it's my weight, it's the natural weight, the natural heaviness of my body, and whatever the movement is, that's giving it that sort of, uh, that heavy kind of connection. That, like, but it doesn't mean that you have to compress your body like this. Oops. Keep your back straight, just let everything hang relaxed on that frame. Okay? something, a little something, I think that's the best way to approach your, your Keiko is every time you train, just in a provocative way or something that you're thinking about or maybe sort of in a thematic way, uh, just address a different aspect of your, your practice so that it's constantly layer by layer getting better. Sometimes it's hard to see that progression daily, but you look back a year and say, wow, my karate's evolved a lot. That's usually a good sign. My karate looks way different now than it did 10 years ago, and I hope it looks a lot different 10 years from now because that means it's growing and changing. Okay, so that, that's a good thing. But today we talked a lot about sort of having this um, relaxed uh, composure to a lot of your movements. I think that has so many applications just outside of karate as well. You know, not trying to force something, but actually just settling in and, and basically finding a natural way of being. So as you progress forward in your practice and you guys are going for Shogun, I would say maybe start interjecting that element in it. Because oftentimes when you say you're coming down the home stretch for your Shogun, like your test is maybe three or four months away, it's part of it is there's an intensity. Like you're really trying hard to make sure you have everything down, you're training a lot of spirit in your practice. But I would also buffer that to some degree with just letting your body naturally be. Okay, so when you're hitting, instead of really trying hard, just let the, the heaviness of your hit hit. When you're making a movement, just let the heaviness of your body make the movement. And then what happens, I think, is the movement is going to get really efficient. It's going to be steered by very piercing sort of intention, but the body's going to be acting very naturally. And that's a wonderful, when you can get that kind of a balance, and one's not consuming the other, like I'm really intense, but now my body's out of control and it's tension. I'm really intense, but my body's behind it with good relaxation and operating naturally. That is like, that's the balance you want in your movement. It has composure. It has all those things, uh, zan chin, niso no kokoro, tsuki no kokoro, because this is now natural. Do you follow? Right. So.